In this video today, I'm going to look at colour correction. There are basically two things you can do to, at the end of a painting to correct it, and one's about composition and the other one is about colour. When it comes to composition in watercolour, that's really hard to correct. But the colour, there's lots you can do. You can add and you can remove. What I see as the problem in this painting I've done of a crashing wave is that there's a disconnect between the sky colour and the foreground colour. So what I'm going to aim to do is completely change that sky. You can add colour and remove colour and that's what I'm going to do both in the sky and in the foreground. Um, I'm going to completely change the colour of the sky. The two blues that I've got on my palette are a cobalt blue and a phthalo blue and I'm going to use those two puddles. I've already prepared them, I've squeezed out the paint, I've made some lovely viscous puddles. This is an enormous mop brush, well it's not enormous, it's the biggest one I've got and I'm just dramatically adding water and you'll notice that I try really hard never to go back over a section that I've painted on when I'm painting in water or with the colour. You put it on and try and move on to the next section because the layer underneath can re-dissolve and mix in and my goal in this is to add colour, not have things mixed together in a way that I may not love. I just keep trying to come down, down, down and not be going back into the uh, areas above. Uh, that's my goal, whether I do it or not doesn't matter. The point is that that's uh, what I aim to do when I'm glazing is in watercolour. So it wasn't quite dark enough and you know, there you go, I'm ruining the rule I just suggested that you don't do. I had to go back in because it wasn't quite dark enough. Now I'm quite liking the effect of the colour harmony. I'm moving much more towards colour harmony. I'm just mopping off the excess moisture here. But in a moment I start to realise that there are green sections on the sky and it's um, hilarious that I didn't realise that that was going to happen because there was a lot of yellow in the sky so it's completely natural. I've added blue on top of a big yellow purpley sky and naturally I've come up with green sections. I'm just using a clean part of the tissue to go over and mop what I hope will look like a soft spray. It also solves the problem about where to stop when redoing that sky because when I painted it the first time I painted the whole sky in and wasn't so concerned about where the sky stopped and started. You can see there that uh, the paper is beginning to buckle which is a natural part of what the paper naturally does because it's 100% cotton and it's absorbed extra water. So I'll talk about that in a second. The reason why I've chosen this purple mix, it's magenta with a bit of phthalo blue, is that I'm hoping it will counteract the yellow, the greeny yellow bits that are still managing to poke through in that sky, which is just fascinating what colour does, how it behaves. I find that non-stop fascinating. And I do find in the end that the magenta mix does manage to neutralize the excessive amount of green that I had going in the sky. I'm doing lots of mopping, lots of holding the board on a big angle. In this instance I allow that beautiful purpley mix to run back in. I love watching what the paint does uh, with water and I think that's the point of painting in watercolor in fact is what is the paint going to do with that water? I just love it. So again, you can start to see each time that I lay it flat, I'm just mopping my lovely spray edge again. Each time I lay it flat, you can see that there is a really high, uh, high light part where the light, the, my above light, right, it's a ring light I've got above this desk, um, is extra light and that's because there's mountains and valleys being formed in the paper as it swells and depresses and I deal with that with gravity and I'll do that again. So just in that section there there just was still that yellow poking through so I'm coming back in with more of that magenta purpley mix and adding a bit more of that phthalo and uh, in a moment I think oh that now I've achieved colour harmony so you know it's looking better in terms of the colour however that sky is ridiculously dark even though we all know that watercolour dries lighter 
about 15% lighter every single time it dries lighter. Uh, it's still too dark and I just feel like it's conflicting tonally with the wave. So in a moment I'm going to grab that big mop brush and attempt to lighten the sky. I actually end up changing it a few times because I'm working on some beautiful quality paper. It was probably Ash. I also love uh, Saunders Waterford, but it was probably Ash. I nearly always paint on 300 GSM. Not that the GSM weight of the paper is about the quality. The brand is about the quality. And, um, but it means that I can add lots and lots of layers when you use a quality paper. It also means that in a moment, when I get out my mop brush and start to remove some of that color, just by adding a big dollop of water, the paper is just able to handle it. With a paper uh, that's good quality, you can add many layers, you can remove many layers, you can scratch into it, you can do a lot to it to, uh, without damaging. It will not peel. Um, for a really long time. I'm also lifting it at this point on a vertical angle because sometimes you can get really beautiful movement um, with the colors as they run down the page. Sometimes it can look like rain. Uh, that didn't happen in this instance, which is fine because I'm about to remove some of the excess. So you can see me just moving. Um, I had a top down angle, now I've got a bottom down angle. I'm kind of sitting with the painting and just giving it time for the paint to dry. I also don't want to wait too long because if I'm going to start to remove, and here I go with the really big uh, mop brush, if I'm going to start to remove, I need to do it now before it's in that half dry state. And I have well, haven't waited too long, so it's beautiful and wet still. So when I come in with this enormous mop brush, then I'm able to push the pigment out. I'm just allowing it to run off the page and onto the towel that's on my desk. This is partly why I like to have a towel on the desk. I don't want to have to think about that. don't want to mop the table, that's for sure. I like to set up lots of things that allow me to be in the moment as I work on a watercolour. Thoroughly recommend squeezing out more paint than you need. I recommend that when you're painting, it's a lot like cooking on those cooking shows when they encourage you to set up all your ingredients first. Do the same with paint. Be generous to yourself. This is your me time. So think about ways in which you're gonna um, enjoy the process. And one of those will be to squeeze out excess paint. I'm mopping again with a clean tissue. enormous drip collecting in the corner which I love and really easy to mop off rotating and um, having a look at where the paint is. It's still really really moist and you can see yeah there where I lay it flat on the table you can see how incredibly reflective it is. So at this point I think okay color harmony big tick but I don't like those big flat lines. They're not helping the story. They're not helping create any action. And what I want is a bit of action. I want this to look like a crashing wave. So I decide to introduce some oblique marks into the sky, which I hope create a little bit of action. You can see also that I opted not to use a spray bottle. I love spray bottles. I love what they do. But that is... Um, wonderful for moving paint around. However, you do lose control of where the paint goes and um, doesn't go. So that's why I was using a big mop brush when it came time to removing. I'm doing just lots of gravity, rotating it round, uh, deciding again to mop that line. I don't want any back runs at that point and so that's why I do this over and over and over again and uh, lots of gravity to try and make sure that the excess moisture doesn't go off. I was pointing there to the tissue to show you that there was a little bit of paint so I attempted to add it to that white section. I'm going to put to something about the white section now. Big mop brush, lots of water and leaving little um, dry sections as well. 
mopping that line down there. That way I'm breaking that line. I love that idea where you break a solid line and you make it look way more interesting. A little bit of tone and attempting to move it. How much water is there is what I'm thinking to myself. Not enough. So I'm coming back in with that water filled mop brush to make those tonal marks move about. It's a good idea to turn your painting upside down to make it easier for yourself. So I allowed the, dry, the sky to air dry. I like often to do that and not push the paint around with um, a hair dryer. So these foreground marks I'm unhappy with. I'm going to use my at the time favorite flat brush. It was an art district brush that I had used over and over, you can see. And in fact, it was pretty new. I hadn't really used any staining pigments on as yet. So what I do is wet that lovely flat brush. Flat brush is fabulous at the end of a watercolor painting. And I'm going to attempt to remove those marks. And in particular, I'm gonna remove those marks in the same direction as I was attempting to create a movement into that wave. So that's why I'm using that very particular angle down to follow the movement of the wave. I actually have a video which I'll um, put a link down below to the whole painting of a wave, crashing wave video. And it starts with um, a drawing that I found on Pinterest which gives you how to draw a wave in six steps. It's brilliant. I'll put that link in the um, description box. So just click on the name of this video and that will take you to the description box for this video and there'll be the link to the how to paint a crashing wave. Because in this video I'm just focusing completely on how to correct it. So this lifting of the lines goes on for quite a while. I do speed up a bit in a second because it really goes on for a while. But there's two things that I'm doing with that damp brush. Sometimes I pick up the paint and I put it somewhere else. And sometimes I put all the paint onto the sponge. So it depends what you want. As you pick up bits of, brush, bits of paint on that brush, sometimes you can just put it somewhere else and it can just look like a really lovely light, light tone. Um, that's quite subtle. So that's why sometimes I'm cleaning it off and turning it to a clean, thirsty state. And sometimes I pick up a bit of paint and move it about, put it somewhere else. Your ability to lift the color has everything to do with whether or not it's a staining pigment or it's a lifting pigment. So staining, non-staining. Most watercolor paints can fall into those two categories. Sometimes I just use the towel to add the extra um, paint to, but the sponge really does work brilliantly. Okay, I decide that in that part of the wave, some light would be coming through and I start to lift off. So what would be lifting would be the cobalt because that does lift. And what would be hanging about would be the phthalo, that's a staining pigment. I'm unhappy with the yellow on top of the crashing wave. So I'm mixing here a really pale batch of uh, phthalo. And I'm going to wet the top of the wave and then paint phthalo over it. And use, I hope, uh, get a bit of green on the top of this wave. I end up kind of covering it, even though I put in quite a... Um, soft tone, a light tone. Um, the green is really quite covered very quickly. The yellow, I mean, is quite covered quite quickly. Um, and so it ends up being very subtle and I didn't mind that look. There I am going back to that thirsty brush, that wonderful flat brush. I think it's called a one inch. It's not really as wide as a one inch, so maybe it was called a three quarter inch. Anyway, if you like how that brush was behaving, it was an art district um, brush that I bought online. If you want a link to anything, please make a comment down below and I'll uh, find the link and 
uh, give it to you in the comments. There's my palette again and I decide it's not quite green enough on the right hand end and I actually mix up a little green. The yellow would have been Oriolan yellow because I love Oriolan yellow. It's quite transparent, though in some brands not as transparent. But um, it's not a pure yellow, but it's close to a pure yellow. And I find it just blends brilliantly with every colour without being overly vibrant. And I don't love a vibrant yellow. I often don't need it. So I um, opt for Oriole and yellow a lot. I'm dragging the brush along the bottom there to put in, to break up some of those marks. I decide that they look a little too contrived and it's done. I decide to put the brushes down. I've made improvements. I'm pretty happy with where I went. I did improve the colour. Is it a better painting? Yeah, it is a better painting. It is such a wonderful thing to do. Take a risk with a painting that you don't love and change the colour. Add colour, remove colour. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of the video. I appreciate it. Bye, guys.